there's not much life on the streets of downtown Johannesburg. Large South African companies have moved out of the center, leaving behind crime, unemployment, and violence. The former headquarters of one of South Africa's largest banks provides a glimmer of hope, not only for the mean streets, but for the country, and perhaps even the beleaguered continent. These are Africa's leaders of tomorrow. They're studying in Africa's first and only free higher education institution. The 1,600 students at Cedar City Campus all study the same course, a four-year accredited Bachelor of Business Administration. Every student comes from a disadvantaged background where a university education is frankly unimaginable. Sibongale Mbendebele is in her third year at CEDA and has worked all her life to be here. She's the first person in her family to enter higher education. Without the free university, there's no way this 24-year-old woman could be now contemplating a well-paid professional career. On weekends, Sibongale visits her parents and 10 siblings in Duduza, a black township 80 kilometers east of Johannesburg. I'm from a very disadvantaged background, but I did not let the circumstances define my future. Decades of apartheid have left scars of deprivation and unemployment in Duduza. Every Saturday, Sibongale goes back to her former high school to teach a class in entrepreneurship. She was the first person in her family to earn a diploma. Studying was very difficult. For one, my parents are not educated, and I was the first one to reach um, secondary level. And the subjects that I chose were very difficult for me, and I did not have anyone to help me when I'm here at home. So studying was very difficult, but I put a lot of effort into understanding everything in class. And if I do practice here at, um, at home or do my homework and I don't understand something, I make sure that I, I hunt the teacher down the next day and find out exactly what I was supposed to be doing. With no money, Sibongale had given up on dreams of higher education until she heard about CEDA. At first I thought that I wouldn't cope. But I work hard to prove to myself that God puts you for a reason and you gotta work hard to succeed. For many people in this room, Without Taddy Bletcher, Cedar would not have succeeded. A well-recognized actuary who was on his way to emigrating like many other South African professionals when he decided to make a difference in his own country. If a country educates its people beyond high school, economically relevant education, they build business, they build the government, they build the tax base, which in turn allows you to educate the youth again because there's money coming in in the tax base and it builds your economy again. Bletcher has been described as a magician. Through his sheer force of will and powers of persuasion, he's coerced multinational companies to give food and buildings and convinced busy professionals to donate their time to teach. CEDA was something that started from nothing. It was a dream. It was an idea that popped up in our hearts one day and it, we just became just like overtaken with this idea of the possibility. Could it be done? Everybody said, of course, that it couldn't be done. And we had nothing. We had no building. We had no books. We had no students. We had no money. We had no teachers. In fact, we, we had negative money. We owed money. <laughs> so that's all we had. The school began four years ago and chooses students on the basis of academic excellence, leadership ability, and willingness to transform South African society. CEDA, which stands for Community and Individual Development Association, can't afford a teacher in every classroom, so they use closed-circuit television. I think we've been forced by circumstances to think in a different way. You know, if we had a lot of money um, to start off with and a big building and, you know, accreditation, registration, everything right from the start, we would have just done what exists because that's what we knew. Um, I think what we thought is that, you know, in the situation we're in, we need a model that's extraordinarily low cost. We need a model that's extraordinarily holistic. We need a model that's extraordinarily remedial in how it develops people who come from a very disadvantaged background. So I think that we really try to find something that would fit for the circumstances that would be an African-style solution. The holistic approach is taken seriously. Morning meditation is a required course. The school focuses on teaching strategies to succeed in life. There are lofty goals, 
Students are expected to go on to make a meaningful contribution to creating wealth and a healthy democracy in South Africa. Food donations help keep costs down. CEDA only spends 250 US dollars per year educating each student. That's less than a tenth of what it costs other South African universities. After graduation, these students are urged to return to their impoverished townships and spread their knowledge. CEDA's receive donations of course materials from other business schools. Donations even include the necessities of life. Selo Ngozimo is in his fourth year. He was raised by his grandmother after his father left and his mother had to find work away from home. Life was hard in the Tabong township where Selo grew up. But the young man persevered and graduated from high school. He was offered places to study at a number of South African universities but couldn't afford the tuition. He'd given up hope until he was told about CEDA. At first, Sello was skeptical. He wanted to study psychology, but CEDA only offers business. Sello said he wasn't sure CEDA's courses were authentic or that the university, with its novel approach, would survive. The young man said he felt lonely in the big city, and even thought about quitting and going home. There was that thing at the bottom of my heart and at the back of my head that still kept me at this institution up until I believe that this institution is through me that it can succeed. If I don't do anything for this institution to succeed, it's not going to succeed. And if I'm not doing anything, who's going to do it? And this is the only opportunity for me here and now. So I need to make sure that even if management are trying to experiment something with me, let me make them succeed. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed also. Sello is looking ahead to being a part of the first graduating class next winter. He serves on the student council, which is responsible for managing and running the campus. Students do the cleaning on Saturdays. It makes us part of this. We own this. And if we own this, then we are responsible for every. And if we are responsible people, then the country is going to progress. With generous corporate donations, the students are learning on top of the line up-to-date computers. But it wasn't always the case, and early on staff made cardboard cutout keyboards so students could learn to type. Despite operating on a shoestring, the library compares favorably with other schools thanks to donated textbooks. The pupils cover over 40 subjects during the four-year academic program. Classes are small and each student has a tutor. The teachers come from the ranks of South Africa's business community, many of whom donate their time free of charge. The school offers three times the hours spent each week on a traditional business degree. On every measurement, the students have achieved extraordinary academic results variety of ways, but predominantly from the corporate sector. And we've been overwhelmed, I mean, truly overwhelmed by the support that's come for, forward from corporate South Africa, and in, in, in many cases, global firms, who've got involved, and when I say got involved, not just writing out a check, I'm talking about coming in every single day and teaching. I'm talking about coming in on a Saturday morning when you could be off playing golf or, or lying in bed late, coming in here and teaching basic introductory accounting when you're the head of tax at a major bank, you know? That kind of commitment gives all of us the hope that this country has a very bright future. A bright future thanks to this brave venture. With success at home, CEDA may well be the solution for developing countries across Africa and beyond.